We're now going to talk about basic movement at the advanced level. It's not that we move differently. We still bend and send, we still swing the legs out from under the torso, we still feel the, the maximum stretch of the body at the peak of the movement, but we think about it in a more advanced way, whereas at the beginning levels we're thinking about bending and pushing across the floor. We're thinking about the lift through the feet to maintain foot rise as we close the legs and feet. We're assuming you can do that. But we now need to talk about using the standing leg in a more effective and artistic manner. And I'll just let Janelle cover that okay. real briefly. We have a little drill that we like to use that I think is very effective. It helps you feel, because a lot of times when you're taking coaching, the coach might say something like, well, use your standing leg. Make sure you use your standing leg. Well, it's hard to feel which one that is, and well, every leg you stand on is the standing leg. So we have a little exercise that works great. If you were to stand, let's say I'm going to do the man's part of a twinkle to an open right turn, I'm standing on my right leg. If I were to lift up my left leg, obviously there's only one leg I could possibly use, and that would be the one I'm standing on. What I'm going to do is bend the knee of my right leg enough that I can put my left foot down. So in other words, I'm not pushing my leg out in front of me. I'm literally just setting it down, and then I'm going to swing off of it. So I've lifted the leg. I put it down. Now that I'm effectively on that leg, I can use it to swing to my next point. And then I'm going to come down, and I'm going to lift again. So now the free thigh is always high. And since it rhymes, you'll always remember that. So now I'm going to use my supporting leg, which is the left leg, to literally put myself back down on that foot. Again, not pushing it or trying to take a large step. I just need to get my body on the leg. Once I'm on it, I can swing off of it and land. Now the funny thing is, even though I'm going back, I'm still going to lift my leg forward. So that thigh is forward and I'll use my supporting leg to create the next move. And when I land, I'll lift the leg up again, and I use the standing leg to move and swing. Lift, move, swing, and even though I'm going backwards, lift to move back. So that's a good little drill. Just always lift, move, lift, move, and even when you're going backwards, lift to move. And we can, we can practice that together too sometimes. At the more advanced level of dance, everything we do is more. We have bigger shapes, we go deeper in the knee, we cover more space, we swing more, we move more, and we rotate more. But all the same problems occur as a be from beginners to advanced dancers. However, they're more obvious when you become a little bit more power. It's like driving your car. You know, you're driving five miles an hour and you do this to the steering wheel, it wiggles a little bit. You do that at 100 miles an hour and you've rolled the car. Well, this is the same experience. Some of the main things that we find that happen throughout everyone's dancing don't become a major factor in the improvement until you get to a little bit more advanced level. One of the major things that happens when we're starting to rotate and turn more and move more is, is that we create sometimes negative motion. And I want to talk about that now and how not to do it. A simple, a simple dis, uh, discussion of this begins, Janelle's going to represent a curtain and I'm going to walk through the curtain. So I have to put my arms through that and get past the curtain to go through. This is not unlike making a forward step when we dance. I take the step, I get on the other side of her, and then I advance past it. She represents a point that I must go past. The common mistake is someone will take the step, either the male or the female going forward, and they'll hit this point, but then they'll start to turn, and I've gone negative. I've retracted my side instead of advancing my side. This is a very important point, and it will totally stymie your progression if you don't get an understanding of it. So, I'm going to do, do this with an open left box to start. As I go into my left turn, I'm, my left side is leading, my right side is back. In principle, 
I am rotated slightly to the right to wind up for my left turn. I'm not indicating turn through the first step. I'm wound rightwards to turn leftwards. Now, when my left side or the end of step one is positioned, I will not go further back from that point. So I insert my left side and I go past it. Now Janelle is going to do the same thing. She's going to insert her left side and then she's going to swing past it. So we didn't, we didn't negate any movement or retract a side. Once we've established it, we then go past rather than turning as we move. So here's what typically happens. We turn and move. So my side dropped away and my right side had a lot of energy. Instead of rotating opposite and going past the side. So everything advances much, much further without going negative on the side. This is very common for the lady going forward on an open impetus turn or even an underarm turn. Mm -hmm. Open impetus turn, she go, puts her right side in position and must keep dancing past it. I'll do it wrong now so that you can see the difference. My right side, if I turn my right side, before or at the same time that I take the step, I will never get past Jim. So I take my right side past and make my turn on the other side once I've passed him. And it also keeps us centered because if we turn too much and too soon, both of us, we end up being not centered or crossing centers. And it's also inside and outside of turn because when she goes forward, she is going further and delaying her turn, turning later, and I am turning slightly earlier, allowing her to pass me. So her right side, which has been kind of planted, she goes past. And a, a kind of a thing that we would often do in our studio is we would walk with a ski pole, put the ski pole down, and end up having to go past it, as opposed to bringing the ski pole back. It's almost like rowing a boat put the oar in the water and advance past as opposed to turning the oar. So all these little things that we give you mental images is just so that you do not go negative on step one and that you go past your foot. Now when I'm doing a basic bronze box and I'm not moving very much, if I turn a little too much, the party's not over. I still go through. But at an advanced level, when I'm trying to maximize my distance with minimal effort, any kind of negative rotation will stop me from advancing. So even as uh, the backward dancer, it's important to realize that you need to invite your partner to have a nice positive movement and not a negative movement. If I go backwards and turn my shoulder into him, he won't be able to swing straight like he's trying to do. So as I move backwards, I'll move my entire right side and right shoulder back out of the way. I'm inviting him into that space. And then he's doing the same when he goes back. Yeah, a common error that I see for the guys is on the feather finish or the back half of the reverse turn. The, the lady's starting to move and they start to turn. So I've immediately broken one of my cardinal rules pushing energy through my right side forward towards the girl by retracting a side. Instead of taking my right side back, allowing Janelle to bring her left side forward and then advancing past it will give us that same feeling of always advancing the movement onward rather than retracting. An important aspect of advanced level dancing is to be able to make quick and a really strong changes of direction, make them and make them look easy. We talked about in, an, in, the, in the intermediate tape about how to move around the room and how to turn, which really was just passing one another and progressing down the floor. And we, and we showed it like this. If I wanted to, to, to get Janelle past me, I would make her go past. Then she would pull me past, and then I would pull her past. This advances us down the floor, parallel to the walls of the room in a counterclockwise direction. So one of us is always getting closer to the end of the room. This creates turn. 
We use the principle of inside and outside of turn, where the outside mover goes further and turns less, and the inside mover turns more and travels less. So this is what turns us down the floor. That is not going to get me down the floor, but that is.